start with just the acknowledgement of the country quickly. We acknowledge the Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples of this nation. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land in which we conduct our business. We pay our respects to ancestors and elders past and present. We are committed to honouring Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, unique culture and spiritual relationships to this land, water and seas and their rich contribution to society. But well, thank you everyone for being here tonight. And thank you to the Atlas Centre for teaming up with work to bring you all this fantastic and hopefully exciting event. Um, we have had a crazy year, and I don't know if any of you know about the WIFT virtual arm that we started. So I believe that even though it was a crazy year, we still had a, some good things coming out of it. Um, so WIFT advocate for women's issues, um, educate and network within the industry. So if you any of you are not members yet, any of you ladies here, please do join us. We bring you great events like this and great speakers like this. Um, have a look on our website if you would like to join. Now today we are going to talk about the business of acting, which means everything that is not the creative talent side. For example, what you need to do to get a job and what other things you need to do in the industry to stand out. So I've got with me today um, Anusha. She is a casting director. I'm sure all of you know the book. These wonderful speakers. <laughs> um, Anusha's, well, let me just say this first. All of these three amazing people have such long, like, look at this. Some of them are going to be confusing, but I need to mention. Um, but Anusha has worked on Mystery Road, Sweet Country, The Principal, uh, Rake, Red for Now, Peter Allen, um, Alex and Eve. And she's been nominated for, I don't know, 20 to 30 awards and won a, a bunch of them as well. So thank you, Anusha. Thanks thank for joining us today. Us. <laughs> okay, then we have Adam Cook. Adam is the head of acting here at the Actor Centre. Um, he, Adam is a graduate of the NIDA Director Schools. He's directed over 120 productions across Australia, London, Canada, and the United States. Um, he was the artistic director of the State Theatre Company of South Australia for seven years. Um, and I mean, the amount of theatres that Adam is working. Millions, <laughs> millions, I tell you. Bye. And then we have Sophie, who is an acting agent. <laughs> This is the lady that you all should know. Actually, you should, all of you should know. <laughs> um, she's been in the entertainment industry for over 30 years um, with a background in advertising and tour management. And she's worked with international entertainers, including um, Barry Humphreys, Alton John, um, Billy Connolly, and Pamela Stevenson, and many more. So, one of the <laughs> Is we are going to have a little bit of a talk. I'll ask some questions, and then roughly about 7:45, we'll hand over to you guys to do some uh, Q and A. So feel free to ask any questions. If you have questions after the evening, I uh, don't ask them yet because we might answer them later on, and then you can get an opportunity to ask at that time. And then we are going to do a group photo, so we'll get all of us to take a photo, and then we'll do a happy for WIFT. New South Wales is our first real life in person event. So I'm going to start with Adam. Adam, can you tell our audience what is the process of getting actors? Like from deciding I'm going to make a film to, to shooting. Right. Well, um, my background is predominantly theatre, so I'll, I'll speak about that. Um, so I'll get the script, um, or a script I'm passionate about, or it comes to me, and I'll read it, and I'll get what Peter Brook used to call a formless hunch about what it should be. The atmosphere of the piece, the energy, the drive, the tempo, the momentum of it. And then I'll start to have ideas about the energy of the characters. Um, and I've always thought it's important to think not who can play it, which is a very literal way of looking at what actors can bring, but who could play it. So that you think more laterally and more imaginatively. Um, and actors love to transform. They love to be seen beyond being a certain type. Um, and in terms of my relationship with um, 
the casting side of things, um, I'm always open to seeing people who want to be seen because I think getting in the door is one of the hardest things. Uh, and uh, you never know who might turn up um, uh, who, who could be perfect for it. Um, and also, but I also want them to be trained in most cases, you know, be <laughs> because I work here now. Um, so so I'm, I'm now at the other end of it, which is actually, you know, all the experience I have as a professional director and now come and speak, you know, work with young people who want to enter that industry. Um, so, so once I've worked out who it should be, people come on audition, but in a lot of cases, um, you already know who you want. So you, ha so you could say, I don't want to go through that whole process of auditioning people. Um, but when I was running the State Theatre Company, I, mean, I was new to Adelaide, and you thought, well, I need to see anybody who wants to be seen. So we had open auditions, which meant they were just open auditions for wh whatever we might be doing. So you knew who everybody was in that community. It would be harder to do here because there's so many more of them. Um, and so then uh, I would go to the casting coordinator at the Theatre Company and say, here's who I would like to offer. And then they would speak to the agent. And then the agent would say, that sounds great, but um, we want more <laughs> and get the fees up. Um, and the casting person at the theatre company would be the one advocating on behalf of people that I might not have considered and put those people in front of me as well. So how much fun do you put into the casting directors and the acting agents and everyone else in terms of picking your actors? Like if you have someone in mind that you want to use and like other ideas, would you stick to your guts? Oh, well, well, you hope they take advice. Um, I, I certainly done it when I was at the theatre company, you know, and, and we'd offered an actor a part in an Edward Albee play called The Goat or Who is Sylvia? Um, and they turned it down because um, they wanted to do a degree at university instead. And I'm thinking, this is an amazing role for a woman. What, I can't believe you said no. Um, anyway, I wasn't directing it, but I said to the director, what about Victoria Longley instead? Um, and she did it. It was one of the best performances of her career. So it's that element of like, who else is around? Um, and I, it'd be rare that I would say, no, I don't want to see that person. So Anisha, so then you get to speak from the production company or the director about the cast. Um, what is your process that you follow then? Well, our, <clears throat> our process is pretty much like Adam's, but because we're working on a film, and we've got a lot of people that we have to adhere to, whether it's a network or whether it's the funding bodies. If it's a film, it might be the producers. There might be a lot of producers. There's, you know, casting changes with each project. It, there might be someone attached that will be a, a marquee name that, you know, it might be an international name or it might be an Australian name that comes with a project which allows it to be financed. So that, that's all sometimes I'm part of that process of trying to attach a name. Uh, so once we know who that lead is, uh, then we sort of start to fit the puzzle. So we facilitate the director's, you know, dream about that or what he wants. So then, then the process is like, Adam, you read the script, you talk about the tone of the film. There's a lot of conversations about the characters, what the director's looking for. There's a lot of collaboration very early on with the writer, the directors and the producers. Then we get the script, then we choose the scenes and then the fun begins and then we start to build the puzzle. And, you know, I, I quite like, you know, I obviously come with all my, my, um, my choices and we might sit in a room and talk for hours and hours and days and days about the type of actor that we want. We might be really, the director might be an actor's director, so he really likes actors and he'll know, he's watched everything on television, he knows who he wants, and we might scale it down to a short list and we won't even test anyone. We might just offer those actors those roles. Uh, in, in another situation, we then might just audition for every, every single role. <clears throat> and then we might see 300 people, we might see 10. It all depends. Every project is different. So um, it depends on who you're working with, which director, what they want. Some, some directors are terrified about being uh, with actors and directing them in auditions. You know, so if you're, I'm sure you know that, that you know, some actors find it really difficult to be in the room with a director who's not used to talking, actor talk. So they hide behind a, you know, behind a screen or they don't, they, they're terrified or they don't ever come to auditions. They'll just watch the audition and then they'll talk about it afterwards. And then I might force them into a callback situation <laughs> just so they can actually meet the, meet the actors because they've got to work with them for six weeks. Uh, other, other directors just want to be in the room all the time and they're very hands-on. So it, it all depends on each job. So I guess the next question again is for Anusha and Adam. Do you, when you pick your actors, do you purely go on talent or do you also look at their 
social media and their media <laughs> we talked about this before. We, I don't understand the whole branding and social media crap. It means nothing to me. We just, it's, it's acting talent, you know. It's, I, I, I don't get the whole branding thing or whatever that means because it doesn't relate to my business. Were the distributors, are they thinking about what, what, what were those sort of things? No. It's happened in the world of music theatre. Some of you may have had that experience where the casting brief will go out and it'll be about, you must have at least this many followers on Twitter for us to consider you. Wow. In the world of commercial musicals, not like in a, in a state subsidised theatre company, but it doesn't mean anything to me either. No. Mm. I asked that question because I once attended a, a talk um, with a Hollywood director and he said one of the biggest mistakes they made on their movie was getting a very famous Hollywood actress to play the lead and she had no social media. I mean, not if you're Dwayne Johnson with 22 million sure, shooting a rock, kind of, and, you know, but guaranteed. Got that. Yeah, yeah, but it's got to be big numbers. That's yeah. the US are more into that's, that. Yeah, the US. numbers have got to be huge. Here, uh, so they I mean, don't really think sure. our numbers are high enough. And also, it doesn't mean anything to our business. I mean, you know, maybe commercial television, they might say, I don't know, there might be a reality television p person that gets a gig on Home and Away or something uh, for a split second and has five minutes of fame, but it's not going to sustain a career, no. Okay. <laughs> but Sophie, when you select your actors um, to, to join your books, what do you look at? I think we, you know, as a team, our agency, we just need to feel passionate about someone's talents, what they're like as a person. Are they going to work hard? How are they going to navigate the industry with the highs and lows? We take into all of that sort of, but, you know, it's, it's the passion level, the excitement for someone's work. That's the main, the main thing. You find that they don't have the best talent, but you can see that they have potential and they have the drive and the commitment. You will. Yeah, I, I call them sleepers. You know, they might wake up. They, they, everyone has a time where they start to blossom. And, and also, we've taken on people who, um, you know, they might may have played those older characters in drama school, and they've got sort of more of a mature, older sensibility, but they're young. And I, you know, I call it, you know, their planets align when their look matches their age, ma matches their acting. And you know, it's a lot easier to have conversations with people about them because they get them, they understand. Mm -hmm that you know so yeah people will grow into it sure and I think when you are especially a grad um, you know you you grow into your body of work some and some people have a lucky break you know they they you know which is great and that's a wonderful exciting thing about this industry you don't know what will happen from one day to the next but everyone has a different journey mm -hmm. actually you, you said something in there that I was always wondering about if you are an actor and your acting levels are here and you want to go to an acting agent who gets work at this level is that a bad thing because it means if you get selected for a casting you might not be at that level where you can get those jobs yet so you might never get the job is that a thing or no uh i uh, no i don't i mean i don't think so i mean would you i mean there are certain agencies that um I mean, it's great. You've, you've got to aspire to be able to sort of go in for all those leading roles that you want to go in for. But um, it's also subject to the type of role. I mean, if you're not suitable for the role or you're not, you know, but if you are, I mean, I'm sure Anusha would uh, vouch for the fact that you will do a search for, you know, um, many people. It's not just one or two agencies. Yeah. I mean, Anusha briefs out to probably, you. I mean, like most casting people, many agencies um, so it doesn't, it doesn't mean I test them or use them. Yeah, but, but I yeah. think what I'm looking for is, oh yeah, great, that person's around, they're available, or that you know that oh, that's a different way to go. Yeah. So I'm always looking for new ideas and who's around. Uh, and or, so and yeah. so Sophie yeah. might know her actors better than I do. Yeah. So there yeah. might be new graduates, and they and Sophie will sort of push me and go, you have to see this actor because they're great for that role. Your brief or you know we've yeah. read the script, it's fantastic. Please come and see my actor. So, or, you know, please audition that person. And I will trust yeah. Sophie and I'll say, okay, let's give it a go. And sure enough, you know, they'll be, they'll be great. And then there were times where I, this was, I was telling you a few weeks ago, I reminded you, we had an actor, Anusha briefed out tomorrow when the war began. 
and I had a client who was in love with this piece. She wanted to be in it, like, but she was a few years too old for the brief. But she was like, no, I've got to put something down. I have to, I have to. And she did. And I'd been phoning Anusha saying, are you sure you won't see her? Surely you won't go a few years older. She said, no, nope, we can't, we're not. And I said, look, she wants to test. She's going to put it down. And Anusha said, tell her not to waste her time. But she just needed to get it out of her system. So she taped. And I sent it to her and I said, I know you said not to do this. And she said, what the F? Why? <laughs> but she did oh, a lovely test. Tape and Anusha, <laughs> Anusha got her to test for the next few projects. So to me, you know, I mean, you don't go and test for stuff you're not right for, um, you know, because I, I, I think if you're going to do a self-tape, you, you don't want to send in unsolicited self-tapes. You want you want to know that casting are going to look at it, you know. So, you know, we're quite and, and I think what Sophie's saying is the agents will push and yeah. what we've, we might have three or four projects going at the same time. So every every audition, we are it's all stored in our head. So every time I see an actor and they go, okay, they're not right for that project, but wow, I'm on another job and they're perfect for that role. So I, I suggest for, as actors, you know, you constantly do your best work, even if it's a 30-second commercial. Yeah. You know, I might be doing three commercials, a television and two films at the same time. And so I go, oh, that person just tested for my commercial and I'm going to bring you in. In for you know a lead in a film so you just don't know and you're going for those NAB or Macca's ads that you go oh god that's so boring but you know it's going to pay your rent do your best work be professional because I might be looking for something or another casting director at the same time and so that's your kind of um, stomping ground in a, in a sense that's your sort of you know basic audition yeah. and I've used a lot of people from commercials that I just go oh, right now that person's perfect for that project. And as you were saying, how do you get from there to there? Well, it's showing the work. It's it's doing that indie theatre show. It's doing that short film. It's doing showing. You know, you, yes, you you know, you you're continually going to need to sort of grow as an artist and delve deep, and you know, but it's showing that but work that you can do that will get you there. And you know, people. I mean, you see it when someone literally within the first few seconds, don't you? When someone's on their game and they're, yeah. you know, you can see it. This is why the casting people are so good at what they do. They see it. <laughs> this is all about being visible then. So the more you get in front of the casting directors or acting agents or directors, the more you get seen and, as you said, can be remembered for another role? I think it's more about the work, the amount of work. It's not necessarily being seen. It's about actually doing the work and just continually to work and, prov and produce content. And you'll be able to judge. I mean, I think most actors need to really know how to critique their own work and other people's work. And I think that's not enough. To, that's not, you're, not, you're not doing enough of that. Because when I do run auditions, I ask the actor, how they perceive that that audition they don't have the language for it they look back at their auditions they can't critique their own work because that's what you know our our my expertise and obviously the years and years of experience i can see an actor and know how to tweak a performance by saying a few things you need to be able to judge while you're in the while you're in the scene after the scene and then when you look back at the scene to go how can i improve that so when you do your second or third take it actually is incrementally better or you can actually go i missed there i did i drop i didn't have the innocence there I should have done that saying you know you need to be able to critique your own work and, and other actors works why are the other actors getting the work what's so good about their performance and I, I find that most actors can't find the language and they don't do the, enough work and I think the good actors can watch and watch and watch observe and then they from other people's performances as well as their own I, I, I just yeah when when I have clients that come out of major auditions they'll ring up and go I bloody nailed that I wouldn't be surprised if I get this and I put the phone down I go oh dear they're not going to get the role the ones that ring up and go I could have done this there and this and that and they're critiquing it in their mind straight after and I go oh they could get this you know it really is how it goes it without fail and I, I think Adam and I were talking about the first sort of 10, 20, 30 seconds of an audition and how actors don't realise those, those are the most poignant, most important moments of being in the room and also doing self-tests. And I'm sure audition, any, any kind of, you know, work is that that first 10 or 20 minutes is you've got to grab it, be in the scene, be in the zone, because we're watching you and we go, oh, oh, I've seen 20 people, 30 people doing the same scene. And we just go, yep, yep. Yep, yep, not energy, not in the scene, don't believe it. You haven't created the world already, you haven't created the character. And, you know, it's adequate, the tests are okay, um, but they're not blowing us away. And so when someone comes on with the right energy, the right space, the character, uh, we go, right, I mean, 
I want to watch you. And I think that's, you need to know how to get there. You need to know why that happens. And again, you need to critique that work. Doing an audition is so different to being on the job too. I mean, they're two different things, aren't they? It's, I think some actors are not great at auditioning and they need to work on that, especially in their early days, because they will be on a back foot if they can't master the audition a little more than, you know. I think you also make impressions when someone walks in the room before they do any acting. Um, and even today, like we were in the midst of auditions for the, the new intake into this school, and there was this young man who was sitting there at the edge, and I, he didn't look like he'd be of any great interest as an actor. And it is that ruthless in your thinking. You go, oh, there's nobody here. Um, uh, you do. <laughs> I do. I do. And, but you want to be surprised. And he got up, and he was riveting. Um, and that's the thing, I don't want you to be interesting in real life, I want you to be interesting on stage. Um, that, that's where it counts in terms of our relationship. And, I, and I, you know, the ones that you're not sure about, you write lots and lots of notes. The ones that are great, you don't write anything because you don't want to look away. He was 19. And then my brain goes, oh, I hope we get him. <laughs> you know. So now with um, self-test, I mean, self-test has always been around, but now it's been more prominent. How do you find, find that experience? Are actors different in self-test than what they are in auditions? Because, I mean, they can do 100,000 takes if they want to, and they don't have necessarily the direction. I don't know, maybe from you, what, how do you find that? Well, we, we teach self-taping here because we know that's kind of the way of the now and the future as well, which is and be ready for that and, and not be phased by it. So, you know, and you want actors to have that chutzpah and that, I want them to see me and I've got, I am perfect for this part. Um, so what we do now when we graduate people is that they have a, a two-handed scene and they have two self-tests, one in standard American accent um, and one in their own voice. Um, and so they're available and we can send something immediately, you know. So when, when Anusha's coming or Sophie's coming, um, we can get that media out to you really fast. Um, and you do decide in seconds. You know, we've got a lot of digital auditions for the intake this year, and, and I can decide in seconds and go, I don't need to watch the seven minutes of their pieces. Um, because I know. Yeah. Okay. So let's get, talk a little, a little bit more about the other, the non-talented side about acting. Headshots, showreels, credits. How important are all of those things? And what do you want those things? I can't, I can't market my clients without, um, or have a chat about them without, I mean, unless, you know, they're quite known to people, but, and that, that to me is a package that has to continually be changing, updated, evolve, uh, deepen to a bit, you know, a, a stronger package. I, it has to continually, and I think people forget that, you know, I had one guy a few weeks ago, he's been working a bit, and but he had had sort of a quiet patch. I mean, mind you, we are coming through, you know, this period of time. But he, uh, and I, I said to him, your headshots are about 10 years old. And he's just changed them. And I think people forget the basic fundamentals of their package. It, it really has to be, it has to evolve all the time. I mean, you need to see current headshots. Yeah. You know, current reels, current, all subs studio s scenes, I mean, you know, and they have to keep evolving, oh, they like must. How many years do you think is, no, you really need to update it? Oh, it just depends on where that person's at in their life, their life experience might be different in their eyes. There are so many different elements. Um, they may have changed their look, they, you know, um, colour is the new black and white now. I mean, everyone's, you know, using colour shots now, but um, we might go back to black and white, I'm only kidding. Um, but I, but I, you know, they. It's, it just depends on the client. And, and if they're younger too, say 15 year old, they, they might have to have new headshots every year, but not necessarily do a lavish um, session that's costly, but they do need to update. Because there's nothing worse than wasting someone like Anusha's time or Adam's, you know, if we're, we're pitching them in the room with old material. It just, it won't get them in the room. And how professional do these need to be? Uh, they. Well, they do need to look fairly professional. I mean, you don't want a family happy snap. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a few steps up. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mind you, you know, I might say to Sophie, can you just take a quick snap, or get, get Joe Bloggs to take a quick snap and, of, the, of what he looks like right now? Yeah. So that happens, you know, I might look at an old rear, or I might have seen an actor, you know, 
six months ago to, for an audition, yeah. but the director hasn't seen them. So I might send a headshot, but they want, I want to know exactly what they look like now. So I'll say, so I've quickly get them to do a, you know, quick photo. But I also think a reel, up-to-date reel is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, if, and if you haven't done professional work, then do a whole lot of like Adam's doing, you know, two-handers, uh, self-tests so that we can go, great, show us, you know, your comedy reel or are you, are you doing comedy or a drama and give us whatever we've got, depending on what I'm casting. And when we talk about headshots here or when I've used them professionally as well, here we say we want a photographer who makes you look like you actually look like. So when you walk in the room, they don't go, this is so polished or so you know, edited. Um, and I say to them, like, as soon as you get an agent, your agent's gonna say, get new ones, like, and use a photographer that I want you to use, you know. We have Ke uh, Kurt Snedden or Mansour Noor have been taking ours. But like, I used to use, you know, when, show when Showcase, um, Showcast was a book, you know, these huge sort of, <laughs> huge phone directories, um, one for men and one for women. And part of my job would be to go through the entire book. It would take hours, really, wouldn't it? Um, in case you missed anybody. And a headshot is like a mnemonic. So you just go, oh yeah, her. You know, uh, and so when I wasn't looking to see, do they have the right look for it? Just be, have my memory jogged about who's out there. And that's part of my job too, is to know who's out there. Um, but now it's all online. And when you type in all those stats around what you're looking for, it's really interesting kind of gender divide how this turns out because the men in the age group will turn up. But when you type in for the women, almost all of the women on Showcast come on because they don't put their ages on. <laughs> I guess it's that point you're 40 and you look like you're 20 in your photo and people pick your base on your photo and it's not the real person. Mm. <laughs> um, in terms of credits, how important are having credits? I know the, the more work you do, the more experience and practice and you'll get the better you'll be. But in terms of just seeing a piece of paper, this is the amount of credits. Does that matter and how much does it matter? I might look at them. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it doesn't really matter, really. Um, well, there might be, well, yeah. I mean, most of the time I know the actor and I might know what they've done, but I might scan it quickly to find out. It's more, if, if I'm looking for singers, for instance, I'm doing a musical theatre film, for instance, I will might quickly type in singers and want to know who's singing or what they're, I don't know, I don't know, the background, but mainly the credits I usually know because I've kept up to date, particularly in film and television. I think the Americans might look at that too. They might appreciate some credits, like for instance, if you were approved by a network over in the US for a series here, then if there's a, a film coming in here or another studio series, they might kind of look at that and go, oh, okay, that might speak to them. But it's slightly different here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Now, I've heard um, this come up a few times about knowing the actors or seeing them around or being reminded of them. But this brings me back to my question about social media or media or some sort of public footprint. If you haven't seen an actor for a while because they just haven't, you know, there was an opportunity for them to come and audition or whatever with you, you forget about them. So when their job comes along, they won't be the first person you think of. Do you think having a strong presence, social media or media, will help you remember them? Kind of. If, you know, if they're in your face, you remember them for all the jobs that come along. <laughs> <That's my favorite>. <laughs> <laughs> um, only if they've done something naughty and they're in the press. They, <laughs> and I go, oh, wow, so and so is up to naughty business. No, no, no. I mean, that's what the agents are there for, to keep the, you in the loop. So if, you, if you're not represented, yes, you disappear. But if you've got an agent, then that's what their job is to do. So if you, you have an agent, you don't really need to worry about those things at all. It's only if you're trying to do it solo? No, only if you've done a great film or you've done a short film that's won an award and we're interested in knowing you because you're creative or you've done, you know, you're the lead in a short film that's won Khan or something, yes. But not because you're posting selfies, no. I mean, the, the social media aspect is used at the moment, you know, we're doing quite a few endorsements and brand campaigns on social media with various advertising agencies and uh, companies. So um, th there's a little bit of a sway towards social media for advertising primarily, but it doesn't really touch the dramatic field oh, really? here. It's more for 
uh, endorsements and brand opportunities. And again, um, you know, we've had a lot of clients meet with Instagram in the US and have meetings over there. It's bigger in bigger markets, but here our numbers are quite low. And there is a little bit of a, you know, there's a little bit of a call out for endorsements via social, the socials, but we're, we're feeling that market out here still. It's not something that's sort of... Um, I think it actually, I think it ruins your reputation, in fact. I think, you know, if you're endorsing, a, a, you know, whatever you're endorsing, or, yeah, something, yeah. Uh, yeah. then it actually it works against you in the film and television world, really. You don't want to be on a big poster selling something. I mean, it's okay if you're doing advertising and you're doing it and it runs for 12 months and they come and they go. Most people sort of forgive that and that's how we all earn money. But I think in terms of that sort of social, that social media presence, it does, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have sort of much cred. Yeah, it diminishes the dramatic aspect of what. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, mind you, though, there's a lot of traffic online. So I, I feel like uh, that things do get, they do vary pretty quickly. But, um, yeah, I, I don't, it's certainly not going to help someone I land that, that feature film. I was also going to ask about bankable actors and name actors. I think name actors is not going to bankable actors. Can you explain to us what is bankable actors? Uh, we would, bankable actors would be considered marquee names that would have, you know, to say it crudely, bums on seats and that the investors and the, you know, exhibitors would deem enough to invest, you know, millions of dollars into a project with their name attached. And they're far and few between. And they would be a hand, you know, like you, you name some actors and they would still not be rated bankable or marquee value, uh, as opposed to a name, you know, everyone can be a name, whether you're on nine, 10 or seven, or, you know, you're on House Husbands, you're a name. But if you put, you know, it may not mean that the show will be uh, financed because of your name. Okay, I was wondering about that. Um, when it comes to it comes to actors, how much promotion do you do for them and how much do you expect them to do for themselves? Well, we do a lot. I mean, I think part of our job as an agent is to be like their publicist. We need to shout out about their work and update the industry when they've done some work that is newsworthy. Uh, so we're always looking out for those opportunities with our clients. and. I mean, Anusha probably gets bombarded with a few of our emails. We do, we do a lot of, um, we work off all the platforms. We do MailChimps. We do, um, we might phone people. We might, you know, um, we'll email out at their profile and whatever that newsworthy item is to the greater industry, being producers, directors, casting. Um, you know, it's it's part of an agent's job. I think you've got to do that. It's. You know, and we're always looking for those opportunities to shout out about. So if an actor is not selected for an audition or for a job, what could be some of the reasons? If they're not selected for an audition or a job... Apart from that talent, they're not... Because the perhaps they're not the... I mean, you know, they're not... The, the, Anusha might be casting a role and uh, they might need a different type, you know. They might need a... Uh, you know, the family might be a Caucasian, blonde-haired, blue-eyed family, so you're not going to get, uh, you know, it just depends. There are so many different elements at play as to why someone may not land an audition. Yeah. Um, as to landing the job after an audition, well, again, the same thing. I mean, you know, it's, yeah. Sometimes just the, the two lead actors can't both have black hair or... That there's all that sorts of things, high yeah. High yeah, high absolutely. High I mean, I, I had someone that... Um, the, the, I had an inquiry from the UK, Game of Thrones prequel, um, looking for warrior types, and they were interested in a client, but then they turned away. They said, nope, he's too short. So, you know, there are things that that's frustrating because you go, well, hang on a minute. Surely we can work around this. <laughs> <laughs> Surely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I heard a story once of someone that was cast in Game of Thrones. And then, but they were only shooting two years later. And in the meantime, he thought, oh, I've got to run the go with France, I'm going to go to the gym. So he became all buff. And when he went to America to shoot, they're like, no, you can't have this role anymore. You don't look like you did. <laughs>
sporting skinny guy. Now you're not a sporting skinny guy anymore. So I guess, wow, you know. Great communication. <laughs> yeah. You just say, do you want me to bulk up? Yeah. <laughs> you don't just do it. <laughs> so does that mean if you cast in a role, stay like that? Change. No, <laughs> it's the golden rule. You do not change your hair. You don't. You don't do anything. You check. First. You check. <laughs> but yeah, they usually just go. I think there's a clause in the deal memo. Do not alter your appearance from the time that we booked you on this job. And people do it all the time. They cut their hair. You know, they dye their hair. And you go. Don't do anything until we we get you. You know, that's why. Yeah. And in terms of how proactive do you want your actors? If you send them for an audition, or if you call them to say, I've got this audition for you, do you just want them to go, yes, I'm coming, or do you want them to say, actually, this is not the sort of role I want to do? How... I think they need to sort of... Look, I always say to our clients, if you're not feeling that this is the right thing for you, or, you you know, it's your right to say no, and often it's... It's not very often that they do, because a lot of the times they, you know, they're interested in, in what's being presented. Um, but uh, they should, you know, feel that they can say no. I think it's totally fine. And, you know, there are times where we run all inquiries past our clients where we'll go, look, don't think this is for you, but we've had this inquiry because it might be someone they know. So we do as a courtesy, just run that past them. So it goes both ways. Um, but no, I think um, mostly the auditions that come through there, keen to jump in and prep away and work as hard as they can to present the best work they can. Yeah. So do you look at the amount of years they have experience? Do you find that actors with more experience are better actors than you? They can be lazier sometimes. Um, you know, I think um, it, you know, it, it just depends. I mean, maybe, um, yes, they, they might be uh, they may not work as hard as they should. Um, I think sometimes the the younger actors that I mean I'm not saying this is a blanket thing, but um, they might be hungrier. They might sort of really throw themselves more into it. Um, I you know I do you find that or is that? Yeah, I think some sometimes actors get del disillusioned yes, by the business. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, that could happen to a 20-year-old. Yeah. That could happen to a 60-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. I think some people are better at auditioning and some people don't like to audition. And after being in the business 40 years, having to ask them to come in and audition is really horrible and, you know, and I totally get it. And it's usually not me that will do that. I, I fight for the actors because I've, I've yeah. you know, but usually the directors or the producers will, you know, um, push them into auditioning because they want to see them in a particular role. Uh, that could be humiliating and, you know, our business is all about humiliation and rejection. <laughs> um, so welcome to our world. Uh, so, you know, we try and softly, gently sort of cushion it and if it's worth that actor to do that. And some actors, you know, in their 20s are naughty and undisciplined and, and others work really hard and enthusiastic. I mean, everyone is different and who's still keen on the business, you know, because it is not an easy business to be in. Um, so, yeah. But I did a project recently where I had young actors and really senior actors in the one show um, and all the senior actors were there for rehearsals like 15 20 minutes early and the 20 somethings arrived bang on the call time and i commented on this to one of the older actors he said well they don't know the desperation yet <laughs> well which I, I think they meant actually you know the, the, the thrill of having a job <laughs> no i might just go um start with you adam and if there's one advice or one piece of advice that you could give to actors, what would that be? Know the role you're going for. It, I, I've had letters from actors, um, uh, one, one in particular who said, I'd really love to be in the play that you're casting at this theatre company. Um, I'd love an audition. Um, and they were a 35-year-old actor, and it was a play by Ronald Harwood called Quartet, and it was like t four 80-year-old retired opera singers in a retirement home. And I remember thinking, you just want a job. Um, I'd rather you had read the play and knew the piece because um, you just look silly um, as opposed to like target the project and see there is something for me there. And then I think that's it is like know, know the people involved and know the project rather than just, you know, throw your hat into the ring regardless whether you're right for it or not.
But like when we're training actors, I, of course I want you to th stretch and work in all, ki all kinds of different ways and not just be you know, reduced to one thing. That'll happen in the industry anyway. Um, and every actor should think they can play any part, but the industry will also teach you that you can't. <laughs> that you, or you won't be allowed to. Yeah, Anisha. Um, professionally, echoing Adam, just know your work, uh, do, the, do the work, understand the industry you're in, you know, watch everything that's Australian film, television. You know, it's, it blows me away that everyone think, is looking for America. So they'll watch every American show and television show, but they're not actually, whether it's crap or good, 